Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Well, the little peepers are getting stronger by the day. Still have all six. They're doing great. Out here free-ranging, sticking around, eh, grubbing. 80 degrees are hanging in the shade. Beautiful day. Yeah, it doesn't take them long to learn how to survive out here. Doing pretty good. They did have to dive down in here a few minutes ago. Saw a little hawk come in and take interest in them, and boy, they got under there quick. So I came out of the woods the other day for a very nice celebration of life gathering out here where I met all kinds of new friends and neighbors and some old ones as well, and it was just fantastic and a lot of different people living a lot of different ways out here. Uh, some with the most elaborate solar systems you want to see and others who are just starting off and wanted to know what will one lithium iron phosphate battery do for me. So I thought that'd be an interesting little topic for us to talk about today. And we've kind of done this before in the past, but uh, for all the new people out there that are still curious, uh, what can you do with one battery if you're just starting out? So step one, ask yourself, what do you want to run to start with? It's a good place to start. What do you absolutely want to run? So for some people, when they first start off, they might be living in something like this while they're building a different kind of a place to live in, but they just bought some land. They come out here, they put up a tent or some kind of a structure, and they say, that'll keep the rain off me, and that's just where I need to start. So maybe just to start with, you need just a few lights. You want to charge up your devices so you can stay in touch with the world, order you some supplies in, things of that nature. So... One battery will work for something like that just to get you up and running. And maybe while you're hunkering down in your tent just getting started, you just absolutely have to have a TV. Yeah, you can run that, no problem. So it doesn't really matter what brand you start with, but you know, if you're just starting off and all you want to do is start with one battery, any of the 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries that are out there for roughly a couple hundred bucks, give or take these days, uh, that's a good place to start. And with most of those, you'll be limited to drawing no more than a, a thousand watts, uh, usually less, but that's just kind of a ballpark. But so how do you know, you know, what you're using and how much it takes to run what you're using? And if you have absolutely no idea how much your device or devices or whatever it is you want to run, how much power it takes, get you a simple watt meter like this. These cost about 10 or $11 on Amazon or any hardware store. Just get you a cheap watt meter. You plug it in, plug your device into the front. It will show you how much it's using and that'll give you a good, you know, a good baseline to go off of if you have no idea what your devices are drawing. Or you can get you one like this. It's got a couple different outlets. See, it's plugged into power here already, so then you just would plug your device into here, and you can just toggle back and forth between outlet one or two and see what it's drawing. Outlet number one is drawing nothing. Outlet number two, which has a freezer hooked up to it right now, drawing 71, 73 watts, so which that battery of that size will easily run, just as an example, but the watt meter will take the guesswork out of what you're trying to, to run and whether your one battery will be enough. And I think that two outlet watt meter was only about 20-ish dollars, maybe not even that much. Now you turn on your light, come back here, which the light is plugged into here. We can see the freezer still pulling 72 watts. Press this, and that lot, lot light is drawing seven, six to seven watts. That's it. Of course, I have a low wattage light bulb in there, LED style, so you can run a lot of those off of a battery, right? 
You got you a little TV so you can keep up on what you need to keep up on with some lights on. This thing draws about 30 watts. You might need your bigger TV at the foot of your bed because you're hunkering down for a long time watching movies. 40 inch TV, that thing draws about 50 watts. Running the internet, 50 ish watts. And all of your little portable devices, phone, tablets, laptop, whatever. Minimal wattage there as well. You know, hardly anything. All within reach of one of these batteries. So there's your freezer drawing 69 watts, as you can see. These also show amps, for those of you that are curious. And then you can just toggle through some other values that it shows. So if you wanted to know how many amps that that wattage was, there it is, 0.82 amps. So the 100 amp hour battery that I've showed you, it says right on there, do not exceed 1280 watts. I would never try to push it past that. I wouldn't even probably try to even get close to that. I always try to hold them at no more than about a thousand watts, but that's just my preference. Okay, so you've got your battery, and it's got a couple of solar panels coming into there. It's charged up nice. So, how do we charge our devices and stuff? You're going to need an inverter. Now, you can see I've used this one all the time on these 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. This was got a 1500 watt uh, capability output wise. I've never tried to pull 1500 watts because I've used my watt meter and I've known that this, you know, would exceed this particular battery, but it works just fine. So I just will tie this up right now. Okay, so I've just got the positive and negative from the inverter to the positive and negative of the battery. And I've stuck in a little 100 amp bus fuse right there, just in case anything was to short out. Hopefully that would give out before I'd burn up anything else. But anyway, this is the most simple of systems, right? So now I can turn this inverter on. And there it goes. Now I can plug my devices in right here and be running off of normal AC. We're converting the 12 volt energy to 110 or 120. I can't remember what the voltage is on this, but it will run all those devices that I've been showing you. This would run that freezer. Easy, easy, easy. And I've just got a couple of 300 watts of solar coming in here. So very, very cheap. Now this thing, uh, at the time I had that, I've had this for years. It keeps working like a workhorse. Roughly a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks, a couple hundred more for solar. So what are we talking? Two, four, Five hundred ish dollars, and you're up and running with power in your tent, in your home, wherever. And since you're just learning about how much your devices draw, you plug in your handy little watt meter straight into the inverter, and now you're ready to plug in and see what you're drawing. And you charge, you plug in your charging station for your devices, turn it on. Drawing nothing right now. And you start charging up your devices for communication or entertainment and look and see that it's drawing five and a half watts. So yeah, load up your devices. No problem. No problem. No problem. Plenty of sunshine. Not even touching that battery. It's 100% full. You could run all your devices all day long with your solar panel. It'll be 100% full when you settle in to watch a movie. This is one of the best ways to learn, like what do your devices and equipment that you want to run? Now, of course, I'm not hooking up the George Foreman grill to this or an air fryer, but the same principle applies with larger batteries, larger inverter, can run all of that kind of stuff as well. But if you're just getting started and you just wanna dabble, yeah, get yourself a battery, get yourself an inverter, couple of solar panels, for sure a watt meter. Start testing out the stuff that you want to run. See what it draws. See if you have the capacity and the equipment that will run that. 
So yeah, five cubic foot of food security right there, frozen solid below zero, drawing what, 60, 70 watts, even at 80 degrees ambient temperature. And you'll also need a charge controller. I'd be remiss without mentioning that. So your solar comes in, plugs in here. These lines come out to your battery. The one I just showed you is a Victron, which I like, but even out here on this system I'm using, uh, I've got this. These are very, very cheap. They work very well. Uh, the Victron is cheap as well. And this will keep uh, from your solar through here to your battery. will keep your battery in great shape. And then you'll always know, you know, what your state of charge is here and that you're ready to go. So yeah, I needed to mention that. So yeah, throw in another hundred ish dollars or less 50 to a hundred dollars for a charge controller. And that's a system. So small is not a bad way to start, no matter how you're living or how you plan on living, you can always make use out of a small system, even though you have larger goals down the road. This is a good way to start learning everything. It's so easy, so simple. I could hook up this whole system in minutes and you can too. So anyway, I hope you guys found this video informative and give you some ideas. You don't have to break the bank to start getting on some solar. All right, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. It's beautiful here. I'm staying in the shade. Aloha. And I'll start putting this video together just as soon as I'm charged up a little bit more. <laughs> doesn't take much, guys. Just doesn't take much. Get you one of those, though. <laughs>